Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Meeting. Today we are the 20th of June 2023. Around the table we got myself, Damien Duportal. We don't have Hervé, he's in holidays, lucky him. Mark Waits, Stefan Merle, Bruno Verarten, and Kevin Martins. Okay, let's get started with announcements. So the weekly release 2.4.11 has been released. That is the war packages and containers. Uh, I assume changelog is going to, to be there. Is that correct? Correct. Um, it's, it's been merged and, and will appear, or it's been flagged for merge and will appear shortly. Cool. Um, something that I will also describe later today on the platform SIG meeting, that release uh, might be, uh, will should also have updated the Windows Docker image to previous week weekly, 2.4.10. Uh, more on that on the platform SIG, I don't want to spoil anymore. Uh, I haven't tested that yet. The goal is before, um, uh, until uh, next week, we should be able to do manual, let's say non-automated, uh, non but non-manual processes to publish two days weekly as a Windows image that might need to add some tags and do some things. Uh, thanks for the contributor who did that. I'm not aware of any Jenkins infrastructure Windows controller usage, but since it was a, a change, better to to mention it here. I don't have other announcement. Is that the case for you folks? No, okay. Let's continue with the upcoming calendar. So I expect the next weekly release 2.412 next week, the 27th June, 2023, is that correct? Next LTS release is planned for next week, but the Wednesday, the day after the weekly, 2.401.2, of June. Is there any question, clarification? Okay, a word about Jenkins advisories. We had one last week that wasn't announced yet during your, our previous meeting that was announced a bit later. Um, so that advisory was infra so for the plugins that's okay and another issue that has been fixed on the 2400 weekly release and 2401.1 lts we are using that lts or later weekly releases so we are not subject to the advis that advisory no more advisory announced any question Clarification. Cool. I'm not aware of the next major event where the Jenkins infrastructure member will be present. Is there anyone? Nope. Okay. So let's proceed to today, to uh, this week milestone. I'm switching to the GitHub view. So we have two closed issues, three. Uh, closed as uh, no work planned issues. Uh, for the two closed issues, a user had issues where they, with their uh, account. Uh, I've triggered the full reset of their password and so there is the SMTP server on Mailgun was saying uh, everything went fine. So I assume the user might have the mail on their uh, blacklisting or they might have a rule that deleted. it. I haven't heard back, so the issue has been closed. Um, and also a question from Alex, uh, with the migration of trusted CI controller, the private controller from AWS to Azure, uh, some minor elements changed. They were documented, but clearly not enough. Uh, so anyone interested on in reviewing the runbook and updating to avoid someone else, uh, it the same, let's say, hiccups, uh, it's welcome, but it looks like information there is correct. So just a reminder for everyone, now you have to SSH to controller.trusted.ci Jenkins.io, 
which is the host name of the virtual machine that we use for SSH port forwarding, while you still need to connect to trusted CI Jenkins IO as the web service with the ETC host configured to the loopback on your machine. The goal is when your web browser goes to trusted CI Jenkins IO, then your ETC host file is, is read. There is no DNS record for this service. And then it goes through the local port from the SSH port forward. Any question? Okay. Uh, for the three other, these, uh, so reset password email, that one is uh, uh, yeah, account and someone is either doing an error or mixing our infrastructure with Jenkins, same for the 3625. We closed, but we worked on a remote repository for Keras Labs. Uh, some of the Jenkins project, including Stapler, require a dependency name that is stored on elementary release from Keras Labs. Uh, we wanted to add that mirror as a, a inside our repo Jenkins artifactory because that remote repository was having issues in sometimes it was answering errors or wasn't properly set up. Uh, we tried to mirror it, but we hit some hiccup. Uh, thanks for, for, for the work from Basil, Vincent Latombe, and Jesse Glick. They were able to guide uh, the people at Keras Labs so they can publish directly to the Maven repo, central repository. So now no need for us to add a mirror since everything is on our own mirror of the Maven central repository and it's it's cached directly by our system. So that's why it has been closed as no work done because there is no additional work to be done here. Any question? Okay. Uh, this was the work Damien seems to have frozen for me. Did others see this, perceive the same thing? Yes. yes. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, I don't know what is happening. We have storms in the area in Belgium, so I assume my ISP is having issues. Sorry, I will try my best. Um, okay, let me share my screen again. Can you see my screen? Is it readable? Yes. Okay, it's still recording on the cloud. Okay, so I was saying uh, Stefan Hervé and I are currently uh, changing our machines and rotating our passwords, so we are not able to work uh, uh, with the availability we used to have this week. So we don't have a lot of work done. That's expected, and that might be at least one time we feel our environment. The, the the sound is not really good. Do you want me to try to share my screen and you just your voice and your video? Yes, good idea. Okay, can you still hear me? Okay, cool. Sorry for that. It's weird. Why am I having these issues?
Okay, just been texted by my ISP. They are having issues. Okay. Guess what? It's their DNS infrastructure. <laughs> it's always DNS. Can you see my screen? Yes. Good for me. Cool. So just a word about the work in progress now. Um, first, you can stay on the notes, Stefan. No need to open the issues unless someone need. Um, so installation and configuration of the Datadog plugin on CI Jenkins IO. So right now I've handed over this task from Hervé. So I'm working on how to ensure that the Datadog um, agent which run on the virtual machine host is able to communicate with the controller. Um, there are two problems to solve uh, or being solved here. The first one is how to configure properly the Datadog agents. We don't want it to listen on everything. Otherwise someone could send uh, data through the UDP listening port from the outside. And secondly, the second problem is how to make um, communication between the, the, the container where CI Jenkins IO controller runs and the Datadog agent on the host. The second one is easy. We use the Docker zero gateway IP. Everything listening on the host machine will listen on that interface or is able to. And then since it's a gateway, just have to use the gateway IP as the destination. Since there is only one Datadog agent and it's the only protocol listening on that machine, there is no conflict. So the goal will be to reinstall the Datadog plugin and set it up to listen on whatever IP on its ATN125 instead of low closed. For the first one, the, we will have to add a network security group to forbid any incoming request at the network level as hinted by Tim Yacomb. And also we will need to update Puppet in order to ensure that any requests from another interface than the loopback or the Docker zero should be dropped or even rejected. We cannot drop all UDP connection though, otherwise we kill the DNS resolution. So we have to be careful on this one. Uh, there is an account issue for the next, uh, any question on this one? Okay. Account issue, I'm, uh, I'm skipping this one. We are waiting from the user and if they don't answer in two days, we close it as usual. Ubuntu 22.04 upgrade campaign. So uh, the machines hosting the census and usage services has been upgraded. These two machines are still running on AWS and should be migrated to Azure uh, soon. And also we migrated archives the Jenkins IO, which is an IRM machine running on Oracle. And it's also running Ubuntu 22.04. So now the last non-Ubuntu 22 machines that we have to migrate, I accept Puppet Jenkins IO, which must be Ubuntu 20. For the rest, we have CI Jenkins IO virtual machine, we don't plan to upgrade it, but instead we have a new machine that is going to be created on a new network. And we will use this one as a base instead of migrating the current one. We have the AKS cluster node pools. And in order to switch to Ubuntu 22, we need to upgrade to Kubernetes 1.25. And as far as I can tell, these were the last machines. The rest of the machine has been upgraded. Oh, no, my bad. We have updates slash PKG machine. That one will be tricky. <laughs> Any question? So I don't plan to work on PKG this week because I will focus on Kubernetes 1.25 and other tasks. So I propose that this issue should move away. If I got extra time, which I don't think I will, uh, the proposal will be with, to pair with Stefan or someone else interested uh, on how to run the release process of the Jenkins core inside a container so we could migrate the updates machine to whatever OS we want because all the dependency will be an Ubuntu 80, 18 Bionic container. And then we could upgrade separately the container and dependencies with a test offline without requiring breaking a release.
Uh, next issue, renew SSL certificate for updates Jenkins CI org. So thanks, Stefan, for driving this one. So we were able to discover that uh, a former experiment by someone named Damien Duportal, aka myself, uh, had some leftovers on the U USR bin re repository that was pointing to the snap. Uh, that broke the cron tab that was running every day in charge of checking if a renewal is required. We cleaned up that part, but it's still not renewed because we need a full path or we need a way to update the path seen by the cron tab processes. Otherwise, the third bot installation is not available. So there are multiple solutions here. The one we discussed and that uh, we agreed on separately and then uh, with a consensus is to stop relying on the automated cron tab and write ourselves the cron tab line using Puppet. So we will control every pieces, including the logs. Doing so will avoid us wasting time like this one because it's been six or seven months that we have the issue repeatedly. And with the new cron tab, we would have logs that will surface the error. We would have solved that problem seven weeks, seven months ago if we would have had logs. Since we cannot do it, Let's fix it by ourselves. Yes, and that will be useful for any other kind of uh, puppet driven uh, Let's Encrypt renewal. Exactly. Uh, the goal is to finish this issue, this milestone. Please do not run the third bot renew command manual on the machines because we want to be sure that the process works as expected. Keep saying that, Damien, because there's the risk that Mark Waite's going to go <laughs> in. So I appreciate your saying that. Thank you very much. To be it's quite important. transparent, the first target is myself. I almost forgot this this morning, and I was to update that. And I was like, no, Damien, no, as if I was two person in the same brain, right? <laughs> right. OK, so I'm not the only one who is sorely tempted. Oh, I know how to fix that. And then it, the problem hides again for months. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, next step is uh, uh, migration of the public gates cluster. Uh, the migration is finished except for one service. It has been migrated officially. It's the mirror download system, but we kept the old one because we still see some requests incoming. Uh, my goal is to write down a a quick blog post that will need your help, Kevin and Mark and Bruno and anyone here. The goal is just to communicate that the public IP for the mirrors, for the, the mirror or director is going, is going to be changed. So when we will kill the former cluster in a few days, I will let the honor to Hervé when he will be back. Um, anyone complaining that, oh, it's not working, they will have a blog post and public communication on the community Jenkins IO. So we can say, hey, please respect the RFC for DNS resolution caching. So almost there uh, and everything else has been removed. A lot of cleanup has been done by RV on that area. So yeah, that one was a huge one that opened the road for IPv6 support for the mirrors and some services hosted on the new cluster. And also, that means we only have CI Jenkins IO and third CI uh, left in the overlapped network. So good news, people. Almost there, uh, killing that old unreliable network. Next step, Stefan. Proposal for application in publicates to migrate to RM64. Can you give us uh, give, give up ahead on this one? Uh, I just... Um completed the, the first list with uh, all the, the services that have been uh, moved in the new public AS, um, but not worked on the on the one that can be eligible for the ARM64. So we, we, we got few, but the, the list is not uh, finished yet. Cool, thanks. Um, should we continue working on this one for the upcoming milestone? Um, yeah, why not? Yes. OK. Uh, next one is use a virtual machine, a new VM instance type for CI Jenkins IO, aka migrating CI Jenkins IO to Ubuntu 22 in a new network. 
Right now, uh, I haven't worked on it since uh, since last meeting, um, except for starting, uh, let's say, proof of concept of inbound agents. Right now, I'm having minor issues. Uh, I expect to work on this tomorrow since uh, my machine has been migrated. Remove IP restriction on bounds or migrate to VPN. So uh, contrary to what we discussed last week, it appeared that during the security release, it has been an annoyance of adding a custom IP. Uh, besides the security team confirmed that it's, it wasn't a problem for them. Uh, team and Alec expressed their concern about that restriction and other solutions. There isn't a consensus on that area, except that instead of restricting IP that can SSH connect to bounds, requiring a VPN access could be a good intermediate for that. So you don't need to keep track of your public IP, which is, yeah, yes, I would say, if you have to change your public IPs, either you have an ISP issue or you shouldn't access trusted CI, but the VPN is a, is a good intermediate, so let's go that road. That's though we'll need a bit of work because we need to peer the virtual networks between each other. Um, I've added the, the to-do list, but I propose to delay that task because we don't have Hervé yet and we have other tasks to finish. Uh, of course, if it starts to be an emergency or blocker, please raise your hand and we will put this back from the backlog back to the milestone and change priority. But as far as I can tell, for now, we should keep this one. Uh, Matomo GitHub Docker repo, haven't done anything yet. I plan to work Thursday on this one. Uh, I keep having this one on the next uh, on the next milestone. So unless there is any question, I can jump directly to assess artifactory bandwidth reduction option. Uh, Mark, can you give a status on your part of that task? Apologies, I still haven't done it, and it's been my. I must do it. I will do it today. I've got to send the summary to to our colleagues at JFrog so that they're aware that our initial experiment did not have the desired results, and then we've got to find okay, what are the alternatives? But that won't happen until late today. Okay, thanks. And I apologize. I have to drop off the meeting here in okay. two or three minutes for another meeting. Just before you drop, uh, I have a meeting invitation named GFrog Bandwidth Status Report for Thursday, le 6 p.m. my time, so noon. Is it a meeting with GFrog? It looks like. Yes, meeting with GFrog, Stephen Chin, or Laurie Lorusso. Interesting. Okay, good. So, yeah, so, so I, I thought Stephen was out of the office, but but we'll look forward to them yeah, I'll get that sent out and we'll meet with them and talk to them then. Okay. Can you double check with them? Because it does might be my Google agenda messing up. That could well, probably be since I'm it's, changing it's account. It's similarly on mine as well, but I think it's okay. worth asking, right? Because it's a good excuse. I send them a summary today and say, hey, we see on our calendar this, but we're not sure that you're in the office. Cool. Thanks, Mark. So we uh -huh. can release you. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. Um, next topic is upgrade to Kubernetes 1.25. So the goal uh, that has been delayed from past milestone, but I keep having this goal, is to upgrade one or ideally the two digital ocean clusters to the new Kubernetes version. Jenkins CI failing for Jenkins plugin after changes in Jenkins file. We haven't heard back from the uh, from the maintainer. So I will have the last message and we will close this during this milestone, that issue, because we did everything we could. So uh, I, I need to check if uh, things have changed, otherwise we close it and we can keep going. And finally, artifact caching proxies are unreliable that's directly related to the CI Jenkins IO agents that need to be shifted network so that's my next task for the CI Jenkins IO. That's why I'm keeping this one. Um, now let me just check if we are, can you open github.com Jenkins Infra desk, Stefan? Let's see if we have new incoming issues. 
Nope, we don't have any new issues there. So nothing new, everything has been uh, taken in account. So nothing else for me. So do you have other elements for you folks you want to speak about? No, no, okay. So then I'm gonna stop the recording. So for people who are watching this recording, see you next week. Sorry for the, the bad sound and internet cuts. Let's do better next week. Thank you.